Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ash. Happy Wednesday. Today I am coming at you with part two of improving, improving, quote unquote, the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. Um, I did do a Mothership's one through five already. I'll link that video up in the cards if you want to check that out. Um, today we are doing six through ten. Um, and again, as I explained in the first video, this is just for fun, this is not a serious video, and this is just me improving these palettes to better suit my personal preference. Um, so keep that in mind as we go, but without further ado, let's just get right to it. So let's start with Midnight Sun number six. Um, in case you haven't seen it, I did do a video where I ranked all 10 of my Mothership palettes um, from my least favorite to my favorite, and I'll spoil it a little bit for you, but Midnight Sun is my favorite Mothership of all 10 that I own. It's just almost absolutely perfect for me. It's so close to perfect as a palette. It's not even funny. Um, there's just one glaring problem with this palette for me, and that is Jubilee over here. I have not liked Jubilee from the moment I, I mean, well, I won't say I haven't liked it. It's a fine eyeshadow. It's nice. Um, it's a good quality eyeshadow. It just doesn't feel like it fits in this color story. So I'm going to make two changes to this palette to make it better. Um, but I am keeping these first four shades exactly the same. I really enjoy them. Even Bronze Eclipse, which I've made it pretty clear that I'm not a fan of bronzy orange metallics, um, but even though I'm not a fan of them, they're not something I reach for, I can't deny that they can be flattering on me and they can really make my eye color pop because um, I have green eyes and green and orange are complementary colors. Um, but they're just not my favorite. Um, but Bronze Eclipse is fine, and it's a nice eyeshadow, so I'm not going to complain about it. And then Vermilion Venom is just absolutely stunning. I love this very soft kind of muted red. Um, skin Show Moon Glow is a great highlighting shade for my skin. Um, it's even got a pink undertone, which works with my cool pink undertones. And Blood Moon 005 is stunning as well. I love it so much. I wish it was a little bit redder rather than um, orange. It's a little, it leans a little further orange than I would like, but still beautiful. But I would change Jubilee. Now I feel like um, rather than making this metallic olive green, which is called Wicked Envy, rather than making this a non-special shade, I feel like Pat McGrath should have made um, Jubilee a metallic sparkly olive green. And this is my favorite one. This is, oh god, I'm forgetting, Chantilly. I totally blanked on the name for a second. Chantilly from Blend Bunny's Dollhouse palette. It's just the perfect grungy olive green metallic, in my humble opinion. Um, and I feel like this exact tone of olive green, maybe with more shimmer and more sparkle, would be so beautiful as a special shade, and I feel like that would fit so much better in this color story than Jubilee does. And then I would keep Extreme Dusk and Taboo exactly the same. Wouldn't change a thing. Um, Taboo is kind of writing that line between being too orange um, for my liking, but it works, and you know, because of the orange undertones, it can be very flattering with my eye color. And honestly, I like Taboo and Bronze Eclipse together. They make, you know, a very nice monochromatic eye look, very easy, very simple. Um, so I'm okay with this. But instead of Wicked Envy being a metallic olive green, I would change this to a matte, like, foresty green, olive green, whatever you want to call it this kind of green. This is Lush from Blend Bunny Surge Palette. And I just feel like I could have gone a little bit more yellow olive with it rather than, you know, going this gray direction, but I feel like this works. I don't know. I feel like 
This complements the rest of the palette pretty nicely. It also makes sense with Chantilly. And then these last two special shades I would leave exactly the same. Blitz Violet Orchid is such a beautiful soft purple and Astral Solstice is just stunning. One of the most beautiful wet look sparkly shades that I own. But yeah, that's what I would do to Midnight Sun. I wouldn't change too much about it. I love it so much as it is. Um, but I think if I really wanted to make it perfect, this is what I would do. Okay, so then we have Mothership 7, Divine Rose 1, and I do actually like this palette a lot more than I expected to. Um, it is kind of boring and basic to me, but there is something about it that I like. Um, I think it's more of the mauve tones that I really like. I guess this part of the palette specifically, the first six shades, are very enjoyable to me. Then we have these two special shades here that I don't really understand. I don't think they belong in the palette. Iridescent Pink 003 is growing on me, although also not really a fan of it. I'm learning how to use it in a way that I like. And then Astral Solstice is just, of course, perfect. Um, but here's what I would do to improve this palette for me personally. Um, so first of all, I would actually leave Skin Show Nude and Valoria. Um, I really think this matte mauve is really beautiful. It's a great eyeshadow. Um, I wish it was a little bit richer in pigment. Um, that's a problem, not problem, that's a theme I've noticed with these last four motherships especially is that the mattes feel a little lacking pigment wise. Um, it feels like you have to build them more than the mattes in like the first several motherships. Um, so I wish this was a little bit more intense pigment wise, but it's still a nice eyeshadow and it's very soft and blendable. Um, Skin Show Nude is not quite as good for highlighting for me as Skin Show Moon Glow in uh, Midnight Sun. This one leans a little more yellow, but it still works nicely and it's a good flattering finish. Really, I don't have any complaints about either of these shades. Um, but I would change Sable Bronze here for a matte pink. Um, I feel like, you know, this palette is called Divine Rose. So why not have like at least one matte pink in here? You know, soft kind of rosy pink. This is um, Love from ABH's Norvina palette, by the way. And I feel like it's just kind of a good, soft, neutral pink matte. I feel like the shadow has very much like a rose vibe to it, so I feel like that would fit in a palette, you know, themed after roses. I don't know. Um, and then rather than this shade, this is Refined Gold 002. It's pretty. Don't get me wrong. It is pretty. And I feel like it's... It's not super yellow gold. It's a little bit softer than a, you know, typical yellow gold. And, I mean, it's fine. It's very smooth, very creamy. But I feel like I want something more neutral with a little bit of pink. So Sable Bronze here, I'll swatch it. Um, it looks very similar maybe in the pan to the shade, which is Trance from Tarte's Make Believe in Yourself palette. But I feel like Sable Bronze has a gold finish to it, or at least a little bit of gold in it. And Trance is much more neutral, more of a taupe, and it's got some pink in it rather than gold. So I feel like it would work better with a more rosy pink um, color story, you know? And also this shade's just really foiled and shiny and I feel like it would work well as a special shade. So I, I don't know, I just feel like this is one of the palettes that did not need a gold. I feel like there's too many golds in too many of these palettes. Um, iridescent pink, I would keep. I still don't really understand it, but it is an interesting shade. Like it's not sparkly, it's not glittery, it's just got this 
um, luminosity to it that's very interesting and it makes I don't know it, it makes for an interesting look but I don't know I'm still not totally won over by it but either way actually these two shades I would keep extreme mahogany and love lace I would just keep the same I like the depth of extreme mahogany um, I do feel like it's pretty rich um, it needs a little bit of building a little more than I would like but um, it does work really well and it does have that nice soft blendable quality that I love in the Pat McGrath mattes and Lovelace is just really pretty especially with that um, the matte mauve Valoria I think they make a really interesting look together and they work well together and I think having a metallic mauve in here is nice and this one's just really good eyeshadow and then Rose Dusk, um, the shade is also in Mothership 2. It's fine. Um, it's just kind of in limbo between being a shiny eyeshadow and a matte eyeshadow. And I don't feel like it does either <laughs> particularly well. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I also feel like the pigment's really soft. And it just... I, I wish... It made more of a, an impact, more of a statement. Um, so I would rather have something like Little Sister from Blend Bunny's Dollhouse Palette, which is a shiny, sparkly, cool-toned pink. And actually, it works really well with Love. They actually go together quite well. But I would want something more like that, just something with a little more impact, more shine, and just because it's not a special shade doesn't mean it has to be lackluster. So um, I feel like that would fit better with not only the theme of the palette, but also just the quality that I want in this palette. And then the last change I would make is VR Rose Venus. So this is a very misplaced eyeshadow, in my opinion. So it's got a very corally pink base color to it. It's very warm compared to the rest of the pinks in this palette. And then it has this really strong gold finish. And I just feel like it's not necessary in here. Um, but I do, like, I think if you're gonna do a pink to gold duochrome, this would be a palette to do it in. I just think this was the wrong one. Um, so I picked out this shade. This is Ruffles from Blend Bunny's Sickly Sweet Palette. And it's just a lot more sparkly, and it's not just a gold finish. It's got green and silver glitter in it as well. And the base color is just cooler toned. It's still pretty bright, which I think is fine, but it matches the, um, the tone of the rest of the palette better, I think, rather than just being that weird, very coral, like peachy, base color it's much more of a cool pink base color and I think that just works better with the overall palette and then astral solstice I would leave because I love this shadow so much we don't really need it in two palettes but I love it so much that I'm willing to overlook that <laughs> but there you go that's what I would do to divine rose one I think just embracing the softer pinks and just keeping it more monochromatic. It's not it's not totally monochromatic, um, but it feels more monochromatic than this, you know, and I feel like that that to me works better for this palette. So that's how I would change Divine Rose. Okay, and then we have Mothership 8, Divine Rose 2. And I really don't like this palette. <laughs> I'm just gonna be straight up honest with you I don't really like this palette very much at all um like it's it's hard to explain what I don't like about it I just I feel like the palette doesn't make sense um like I think this is the wrong way to do a pink palette because it is overwhelmingly pink um, I'm going to call this a pink palette, and I think this is just a bad way to do it. 
which you'd think doing a pink palette would be easy and it wouldn't be it would be hard to mess it up, but I feel like they somehow messed it up. Um, so starting with Skin Show Rose Opal, I I don't like this shade. It feels very dusty to me. Um, the base color, which is like this off-white, comes through really strongly, and it just makes it look kind of dusty and not the most flattering. So I would want something a little more flattering. That's all. Um, so I would go with this pink shadow that I have. This is a pink Franken shadow that I mixed a while ago. But it's just soft and it's got like a bit of a warm pink tone to it. But it's light enough that I can use it as a highlighting shade. I just, I much prefer this over this. Like, can you see the difference between those two? And um, Skin Show Rose Opal has a little bit of like a cool pink shift to it. Uh, it's kind of duochromatic, but I feel like I'd rather lose the duochrome, the duochrome effect um, and have a more flattering eyeshadow overall. So I just, I, I don't like this shade. I don't like it. It can go. Naked Blush um, is a pretty good pink. Um... Like I said, I wish the pigment was a little bit richer in these last couple motherships as far as the mattes go, but they are very soft and blendable, so you know, I can I can forgive the lack of pigment and the need to build it up a little more. Um, although when I have brands like Blend Bunny that I have experience with that give me a shit ton of pigment as well as a lot of blendability, it's hard for me to forgive a brand like Pat McGrath for not being able to do the same you know? Um, but I would keep Naked Blush because it is a good pink. And then actually Eleganza is really, really pretty. Um, it's the soft, rosy pink metallic, really beautiful, nice finish. It's very smooth, very creamy. Um, I actually quite like Eleganza. I don't like Bronze Rosé 005. Um, like, well, I guess it's fine. And it's a pretty eyeshadow in isolation, I think. But I don't think it belongs in this palette. It just feels really out of place to me. And I feel like something that would have been better is going with something softer and more peachy rather than orange. And like just something lighter and sparklier. Um, and this is Calendula from Ace Beauté's Floral Vintage Palette. And it's got a peachy pink base color to it and a gold finish. I just feel like that would work better with this palette. Especially because Naked Blush is a softer, like, peachy pink matte. I feel like something softer and leaning more into the pinky, uh the pink kind of peach rather than orangey peach would be better in my personal opinion. And then Gold Lust 001, yet again, another gold eyeshadow we do not need. I would rather have something like this. This is Shine from Blend Bunny's All Done Up palette. And this has a soft um, white, kind of pinkish white base color and it's got a really beautiful cool toned green shine to it absolutely stunning like i i think having a gold in here is a really bad move and especially because we have this um multi-chrome down here um, VR Sextra Terrestrial, which has a lot of green in it. I feel like green is the primary color that you see in this multi-chrome, and there's no other green in this palette. It's just kind of standing on its own, which can be fine, but I personally like to kind of tie things together a little bit more than that, and I feel like this ties the pink in with the green really nicely because of that soft, very soft, very light pink toned base color 
and then you have that really strong green finish to it. I just think that would have been such a better call than this gold, personally. Um, Extreme Burgundy can stay. It's a nice eyeshadow again. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. I feel the same way about it as I do the rest of the mattes in these last couple of motherships. Um, so that can stay. But I feel like Divine Dusk could have been a little better. This eyeshadow is fine. Um, but I just, I don't know, something is lacking in it for me. So I think I would replace it with something more like this, which is Mon Cherry from ColourPop's Wine and Only palette. I think really just what's lacking is um, this is a little bit more neutral and Mon Cherry is a little bit more purple. I feel like it's leaning into the purple tones of Extreme Burgundy a little bit more. Whereas like, show you side by side, Divine Dusk is just a little too brown, you know? I just think if they had gone a little bit more plummy, a little bit more purple, it would have been a much better call than Divine Dusk. And also Mon Cherry just, it feels smoother, it feels a little shinier. Um, Divine Dusk is fine. It's just, like I said, a little bit lackluster to me. And then my least favorite shadow in this palette, Rose Seduction. I don't like this. Um, it's got the same kind of problem as Rose Dusk from Mothership 2 and 7, where it's just kind of in limbo between being a matte and being a shiny eyeshadow, and it's not really pulling off either particularly well. So personally, I would have just gone with a matte hot pink. This is Enamored from Blend Bunny's Machina palette, and I just feel like... This would have been such a good place for a matte hot pink. Um, it's got a little bit of a cool toned vibe to it and it stands out. It's very bright. It's very, you know, much a pop of color in this palette, but I feel like it works. I, li I like the addition of a hot pink in this palette. I just wish it had been either completely matte or completely shiny, you know? Um, and then these two shades, I would keep the same VR Sextra Terrestrial. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm. I wish this was a little bit of a bolder multi chrome. It feels a little subdued, but I think that's just personal preference at the end of the day. And then Astral Pink Moon is a very sparkly, glittery pink to gold duochrome. It's really pretty. I don't love pink to gold duochromes, as I've mentioned quite a few times on my channel. But I think it works and I think it's fine. It's actually very similar to um, Calendula that I picked. So maybe I would go with something even peachier. Um, but I don't know. But uh, that is just kind of an idea of what I would do. Honestly, I don't feel like spending more time than I already have on this palette. I've spent a long time trying to figure out how I want how I would want to improve this particular palette and considering I don't even really like it all that much um I just I don't feel like spending any more time on it but I feel like what I came out with was better and I feel like this is different enough from Divine Rose 1 um that it doesn't feel like you're getting the same thing over and over again even after my improvements so I don't know but that's, you know, kind of what I would do to Divine Rose 2. Now for Mothership 9, Utopian Dreams. I also really like this palette. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would when I actually used it. I don't know, I was kind of on the fence. I felt like I was going to really enjoy it. And then I was also surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Um, but when I sat down to really think about how I would improve this palette, Honestly, I just wanted it to be brighter. Like, I just want this to be brighter and more colorful. Um, but also, I'm embracing the pinkish purple vibe of the palette because the outer box actually... Um, the outer box has a very strong pinkish purple vibe to it. Like, 
you can see this was what they wanted to go with. So I wanted to embrace that, even though it's not my personal favorite. And we're gonna go bright. So Skin Show Nude Ecstasy is fine. Like, like it's not as perfect as Skin Show Moon Glow. None of the other uh, Skin Show shades are, but this works, it's fine. Kind of reminds me of my um, pink Franken shadow, honestly. However, Secret Eden, I just feel like they should have gone so much brighter and they should have gone with more of this kind of purple. So I'm gonna do that. This is Jellyfish from Blend Bunny's Lure Palette. Just this very bright matte purpley pink. I guess it's like a matte purple. I don't know, I consider this like a purpley pink. Purple to me is more cool toned. That's just generally the shade of purple I think of as like a cool toned, almost indigo purple. But um, I guess this counts as just a purple too. Either way, it's very bright, very much in the same kind of category as Astral Amethyst Moon, which is arguably like the star of this palette for me. So I would just want some more mattes that support this. So that's the first change I would make. And then rather than having this bronzy shade over here, which is fine, this is actually a nice eyeshadow. Um, it's very creamy, very smooth. Bronze Desire is nice. However, I think this would be another palette where having a matte hot pink would be good. Um, this is Maybe from Blend Bunny's Surge palette. This is a little bit warmer than the hot pink I chose for, um, for uh, the previous Mothership. And I think that's fine. I think having a hot pink that's a little warmer and a hot pink that's a little cooler is, is fine, especially because um, I do want to keep Shockwave here, which is a warm coral pink. And I would like just something deeper, something a little bit darker to go along with that, you know, keeping with the pinks, um, but also keeping it really bright. Um, and then Bronsolaris 005 is a very orangey, bronze. This is a very pretty eyeshadow and it's got texture. It's kind of flaky. Um, although I feel like this shadow goes a little bit patchy, just personally. Not my favorite. So I would much rather have, um, again, some more pink in here. I think, you know, pink was the vibe based on the packaging and they should have gone for the pink. The one time they didn't really go for the pink, in my opinion. People complain about this palette being a pink palette, but I feel like they didn't go pink enough, you know, based on uh, what the outer packaging was giving. Um, so rather than having bl bronze Solaris, I would go with something like this, which is Don't Speak from Blend Bunny's uh, Sugar and Grunge palette. Yes. And it's got this really nice sparkle to it. I would even argue, you know, for a special shade, it could be sparklier, more sparkly. Is sparklier a word? I never know. Um, but I think this works. I think you get the idea of what I would want this shade to be. Um, and then Astral Venusian Orchid, I would keep exactly the same. It is so beautiful, so shifty, so sparkly. And I, I really like how these two look next to each other. They make such an interesting pair. Not interesting. They make such a nice little pair, I think. So I would, I would want that. And then, let's see. <clears throat> and then rather than having extreme plum noir, I just feel like this is too neutral, too subdued. And I would want something like this. This is Seductress from Blend Bunny's Lure Palette. Hell, I could probably even go a little bit darker, a little deeper with this, but something just bright and purple and, you know, again, along the same vein of Astral Amethyst Moon, I think would have been so much better than this. Um, but Cosmic Bloom and Shockwave can stay the same. I don't love Cosmic Bloom. Like, I, I, I like it, I really like it. It's very sparkly, very pretty. 
um, especially for not being like a special shade. It's very pretty, very creamy, really, really nice shine on it. I just wish it didn't have the gold shift, um, but I really like the tone of it and I think it goes well with the rest of the palette. And then Shockwave, um, Shockwave takes a lot more building than I think it should. It it just goes on much more sheer, like with a brush, than I think it should. But it does build up nicely and it's a nice eyeshadow to work with. So I would want to keep that. But I would change out Blitz Sex Stream. This multi-chrome is very similar to the multi-chrome in the previous Mothership and Mothership 8. Um, they both have this like red, orange, gold, green multi-chrome quality. So I would rather have something like this, which might look really similar to Astral Venusian Orchid, um, like in the pan, but they're actually very different. Um, so Astral Venusian Orchid has that pinkish purple base color that comes through, and this is more of like a silvery pearlescent multi-chrome. It goes like pink, silver, gold, green. So it's it's kind of like Blitz Extreme. It's just the lighter, better version of it, or better for this palette version of it, I guess. Um, I also like something lighter, I think, is better for this palette. I feel like Blitz Extreme is just a little bit too dark. It's a little too bordering on grungy for the rest of the palette because it does have that gray base to it. I don't know. I feel like it's just a little too much next to the rest of the palette, which is weird because it's also simultaneously not enough as a multi-chrome, in my opinion. I don't know. I just feel like Blitz Extreme really doesn't belong. So I would want something lighter, still shifty, still sparkly. Um which, did I say what this was? This is Pearl from Blend Bunny's Lure Palette that I'm going with. And then Astral Vaduzian Orchid, absolutely staying the same. Love the shade. I wish the base color was a little stronger, but that's it. Like, it's absolutely stunning. Beautiful eyeshadow. And yeah, that is how I would change Utopian Dreams. I just, I think going brighter, and more colorful even though it is pink and purple you know we don't really see these kind of purples from Pat McGrath um, so I think that would be fun and then just really going there with the with the bright pinks and the bright purples I think would have been the better choice so okay Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction which honestly the name painted a very different picture in my mind than what Pat McGrath gave us um, Moonlit Seduction, to me, said more blues, more grayish tones, more silvers, and that is not what we got. So as much as I like this palette, and I do, I really like this palette, I think the quality is great, and I do just enjoy this palette just as it is, um, I'm going to show you what I think, what I, what I pictured personally when I first heard Moonlit Seduction. Um, so Skin Tense Glow is, you know, pretty good. It's probably the second best skin show shade for my skin tone or skin tense, whatever. I don't know why they went with skin tense rather than skin show. Um, it does have that pink undertone to it. It just feels very pearly and it works. It works really well on my skin tone. Um, but Rosewood Romantique, even though I like this shade and I think it's a good eyeshadow, I just personally would have liked a cool toned taupe brown matte. Um, I don't think we really needed more pinks or reds in this palette. And I don't think we really needed any golds either. We got a couple of more golden shades. Um, I just don't think this is the right palette for it. So I would have rather have seen something like this. This is Rock Steady from ColourPop That's Taupe. This is a very grayish, very cool toned taupe. And I think that would have been so much better, mainly because of Platinum Dusk. 
like the palette as it is um for platinum dusk the only thing it has to support it is extreme nocturne which is actually a great eyeshadow don't get me wrong um but i would have liked to see a little bit more variety in these kind of browns these like taupey platinum it, platinum isn't the right word is it what is the word i'm thinking of I just, I would have liked to see more of this kind of thing in this palette. And, you know, like, so that we have more options with Platinum Dusk. I feel like you're very limited in what you can do with Platinum Dusk because there's just not much that goes with it, you know? Um, so I think having a grayer, cooler tone taupe to support that would have been nice. And VR sucks to see is a nice eyeshadow. It's very pretty. I actually really enjoy using this, um, but it's very pink. It's a really strong pink shift to it. And I feel like just embracing the blue and green shift that it has would have been such a better call. This is Spell from AOA. This was a loose eyeshadow that I pressed. This is the same, it's a similar thing. So it's got more of a brown base to it, whereas VR Sextasy has more of a reddish brown base. Um, Spell has much more of just a warm dark brown base color to it. Still a little bit of red, but um, not quite as prominent as in VR Sextasy. And then it doesn't have a pink shift. It just gives you a greenish blue finish. So I think, you know, fine. Let it have like a reddish brown base. That's fine but I don't think it needed the pink shift and I would have rather it just shifted blue. I think that would have been so much better. Um, and actually Astral Gold Lust, I really like, and in the pan, it looks much more gold than it actually does on the eye um, because this has some purple and silver glitter throughout it. So it tones down the yellowness of it. And I don't know, I think a little bit of gold, like if they were going to do a gold, this is the kind of gold that I think fits in this palette. So I don't have a problem with it. It's very pretty. And I, I think even though it is a gold, it complements the palette and it complements my idea of like moonlit seduction. So I wouldn't want to change that. And then Extreme Nocturne, I do like, um, but I decided that I really just wanted something darker and richer and like you can see there's a bit of a tone difference so Extreme Nocturne looks almost purple compared to this shade which is Madam from Blend Bunny's um, Dollhouse palette like I'll show you side by side here in a swatch Madam just has some extra richness to it that I feel like Extreme Nocturne doesn't really have Sorry, I don't know why my phone's doing that. Um, Madam is just richer. It just, it's a little bit deeper, a little darker. And I feel like that's something that I would want is just a little bit more richness from this. So that's important enough that I would change that. And then these next three shades I'm changing completely. So Bronze Devotion, we don't need. We don't need a bronze in this palette. This shade is completely unnecessary. And I would rather have this blue. This is Mother's House from Zoeva's Aristo palette. And it's this steely, grayish, muted blue satin. And like, I don't, I don't quite know how to explain the shade because it's not super shiny, but it's very soft when you use it like a matte shade. But I think, the color of it is what's important here. I think the color works really well. And actually, since Pat McGrath loves those these kinds of satiny shades that aren't really shiny and they're not really matte, I think that also fits in with the motherships pretty well. But just maybe even a little bit shinier than this, but um, this kind of blue I think would be perfect. And that really says like moonlight, moonlit seduction to me. So I would want that. And then I feel like rather than having Plum Cabaret, which again, we don't need, I would much rather have a matte blue. 
that's kind of in the same vein as Mother's House. Just, you know, this soft, muted, almost denim blue. This is Cry If I Want To from Blend Bunny's Sickly Sweet palette, right? Yeah, Sickly Sweet. Like, just, just look at that. This is kind of where the whole palette came together for me, like my improved version of this palette. I think having this blue in here really says like moonlight to me. It, it just, it gives me that vibe. And this is, I think, something the palette is definitely missing. So, and then Blitz Venus is a very shiny, very pretty eyeshadow. It's very pretty. Like, moment of appreciation for the shadow. It's very pretty, very creamy, and shiny, and just by itself, it's just a really, really pretty eyeshadow. However, I think, again, a little more blue in this palette would have been nice. And I have this very special one from Blend Bunny. This is Cyborg from Machina. And this is pretty shifty as well. It goes like green, blue, purple, I think a little pink as well. But it's just so stunning. And it's got this really nice sparkle and shine to it, but also has this like luminous quality, very glowy as well. This is such a cool eyeshadow, very multi-dimensional. And I think having it in this kind of palette would have been really, really cool. I think just having something like this in this palette would have been a much better call than this rose gold that we got in Blitz Venus. And then actually Astral Lilac Aura is going to stay the same. So this has a very subtle amount of purple in it. Um, it's mostly just a silvery white, but I mean, if that doesn't say moonlight, I don't know what does. <laughs> I think it works really well in this palette. I really like Astral Lilac Art. It's very brightening, very sparkly. It's just really gorgeous, and I think it absolutely has a place in here. But there you go. That is what I would do to Moonlit Seduction. Um, yeah, I'm surprised actually by how much I altered this one because I do really like Moonlit Seduction. Um, but now that I've done it, I don't know, I was surprised by how much I was changing it, but after I did all the changes and I looked at it, it really wasn't that surprising, you know, because this palette's really nice. It's it's a good palette, but it's not Moonlit Seduction to me. Kind of like uh, Mothership Eleven, you know, Sunlit Seduction. It was a little disappointing um, as far as something called Sunlit Seduction goes. The, it just feels like the names don't match up with what we're being given. But there you go. There are all the palettes and the changes I would make. Um, and if you would like to see a list of the eyeshadows that I've mentioned, um, that I, you know, used to alter these palettes, I'll have them listed in the description box down below for you. Um, but yeah, that is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments, like, do you agree with my changes? Are there other changes you would have made? Like, you know, what would you have done different? I don't know. Either way, let me know in the comments down below if you feel like it. And yeah, thank you again for watching and I will see you when I see you. Bye!